Now that we've completed the energy equation, I want to talk about grade lines. Um, anytime you design a complex uh, system that has water flow in it, you'll be required to draw energy grade lines and hydraulic grade lines on that system. And it's a reflection of the energy equation. I'd like to spend this lecture talking about it. I want to start first with just the, using the Bernoulli equation, that is ignoring head losses, so we don't have to, so it's, it's a more simplified problem. If we go back to the Bernoulli equation, we, you remember we talked about each term having a, representing a different type of energy, which we refer to as head. And it's the sum of the pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head. And when you sum all those together, you can refer to the total head in that flow system. Now, if we think about just the pressure head and the elevation head combined, those things combine to form the hydraulic grade line. And it's typically abbreviated HGL in technical drawings. So the hydraulic grade line, these are simply the elevations that show the pressure head plus the elevation head. In a more physical manner, it, it describes the height that water would rise to if, if that system was open to the atmosphere. So consequently, it, co it coincides with all free surfaces and jets. So this is a useful, or it's a necessary design element of any complex water system. So that's the hydraulic grade line. If we talk about the total energy in the system, that refers to the energy grade line. And this is a, a line that shows the elevations of total head. And it's the same as the hydraulic grade line plus the velocity head, or in other words, the hydraulic grade line is the energy grade line minus the velocity head. So let's do just a quick example. Um, we have water in a tank that's flowing down a pipe. There's a compression to a smaller pipe, and then it jets into the atmosphere. So we know from conservation of mass that we have two different velocities in the system. The, the velocity in the smaller pipe is higher because it has to compensate for the smaller cross-sectional area and maintain conservation of mass. So if we were to draw grade lines for the system, let's start with the energy grade line. We can start at the tank and the total energy in the system is very easy to calculate. It's simply, there's no pressure, there's no velocity, so it's simply the elevation of water in the tank. And then since we know that there's no energy losses in the system, we know the energy grade line just goes horizontal, straight across and that is our depiction of the energy grade line. Now this is assuming no energy losses, so this is a simplification of course. If we talk about the hydraulic grade line, this is the energy grade line minus the velocity head, or it's just the sum of elevation plus pressure. Again in the tank this is easy, this is the the, the elevation of the water in the tank, and it also, we also have the rule that it has to coincide with water, water in tanks, also in free jets. But then as the water enters the uh, pipes, there's a velocity head that's generated. So it's, it, sh it shifts downward due to that loss in energy to, that gets converted to velocity. So it's at the surface of the tank, and then it drops due to velocity, and then in the smaller pipe it drops even more because the velocity is higher. And notice that numerically it has to end up exactly at that free jet. And the difference between the energy grade line is numerically equal to V squared over 2G. Okay, so that's the basic idea. If we include head losses, it gets a little more complicated, but not much. We still have the same rules that we offer, we've already learned. A hydraulic grade line has to coincide with free surfaces and jets. The difference between the two lines is the velocity head. But now the HGL and the EGL drop vertically with minor head losses. So anytime water passes through an elbow or a contraction, there's going to be a loss of energy and it instantaneously occurs at those points. And then the grade lines also slope downward with major head losses. So as water flows down straight lengths of pipe, energy is continuously lost through that system. And that's reflected by a, a downward slope in the grade line. 
we can calculate that using the Darcy-Weisbeck equation. Since we're doing slope here, or head loss per length of pipe, we, we factor out the L. Okay, let's do a quick example. Well, it's not quick, it's actually long and tedious, but you'll get the idea. So we have water flowing through a pipe, and it goes, it goes through two bends where it go, climbs in elevation, passes through a valve, and then a faucet, and then a contraction, and jets into the atmosphere. We know the lengths of pipe, we know the uh, contraction, we know the head loss coefficients at each of the um, at each of those things. Uh, we know the diameter of the pipe and the type of pipe. We know the pressure in and the velocity in. We know the diameter out in that little contraction and the velocity as it jets into the atmosphere. <clears throat> so, determine the grade lines. I'm going to start by finding the slope of the grade lines. Now that we know that there's going to be a head loss through the pipe, we can find that with the Darcy-Weisbeck equation or with the L factored out. The first problem is finding F, so we use the relative roughness, we use the Reynolds number, we go to the Moody diagram, and I'm going to skip all that because we've done that several times now. So from the Moody diagram we get an F of 0 0.022. We plug that into our slope equation and it gives us a slope of 0.415. So that means for every foot of travel down this pipe, the um, system loses 0.4 feet of head. Now let's find drops, the energy losses at the, at the minor um, losses. So the head loss is KL times V squared over 2G. We know the KL for the elbows, and that gives us a loss of almost 2 feet. At the valve, it's more significant, it's almost 12 feet, and at the faucet, it's a little over 2 feet. So that gives us our vertical drops on our chart. Okay, let's start with the energy grade line, and to do this, I'm going to start at the beginning of the pipe and just work my way across. So let's evaluate what the total energy in the system is at zero, or at the beginning of the pipe. So we can do that just using the Bernoulli equation, P over gamma, V squared over 2G plus Z, right? Because the total energy is just the sum of those three components. And we, we have numbers for all of those things, so we come up with a total head of almost 73 feet entering the system. <clears throat> After 20 feet of travel, we started with 72 feet, and after 20 feet, we've lost energy due to major head losses. So we're going to subtract that off using the slope that we calculated before. We've multiplied the slope by 20 because we've traveled 20 feet. And we've got 64.4 feet, feet of head remaining. At 20 feet, there's also an elbow. So after it passes through that elbow, we lose another, almost another 2 feet. And now we're just going to continue working our way through this system by the same procedure. At 40 feet, we've dropped in, we've dropped in, um, more because of um, another 20 feet of major head losses. There's another elbow, so we lost another foot. We travel through 20 feet of straight length pipe again to get us to 60 feet, and there's a loss associated with that. And then there's a pretty big loss due to the valve. Another 10 feet of travel, and then the faucet, and we end up with 25.9 feet of head of energy exiting the system. We can now a good thing to do is to check to see if we've done this right. We can directly calculate what the total energy is at 70 feet. Again, using the Bernoulli equation, we know what the pressure is. It's zero in a free jet, right? And we we know what the velocity is, and it should be 26 feet. And that's pretty close to what we got by working through the working through the pipe from one end to the other. So I'm happy with that. Um, now let's plot it. So we're going to take all those numbers that were on the that we just calculated on the previous page and just plot them on a piece of paper. Notice that the x-axis is the length of pipe, and I've I've kind of I've stretched out the pipe. If 
you remember it takes a vertical turn and, um, and my x-axis here is just length of pipe. You can plot it like I've done here or you could you could overlay it on top of the, the picture. That was fine too. Sometimes people do that. And what you can see is the line slopes downward from for major head losses and then there are vertical drops at each of the minor losses and you can see the valve which has a high loss there it's a pretty significant drop in energy right there <clears throat> the hydraulic grade line usually is easiest to calculate by just starting with the energy grade line and subtracting off that velocity head in our case it's constant diameter pipe so the velocity is constant throughout the length of the pipe so it's another so it's another line just one foot below the energy grade line and I've exaggerated it a little bit here just so we can see it but and there you go you can see the hydraulic grade line in this case mirrors the energy grade line and it's just a little bit below it also notice that we should check the end point of the hydraulic grade line and it does, in fact, when you calculate it, it ends up at 20, which is the elevation of the free jet. And if you remember, the hydraulic grade line has to coincide with all free surfaces and free jets.